Growing up, Chaco de Jesus knew what it was like to want more from life. He was raised in a single family home in one of the toughest neighborhoods in Chicago. There was never enough. However, God had so much more for him. Pastor Chaco rose to become the senior pastor of New Life Covenant Church, one of the fastest growing churches in Chicago, with more than 17,000 attendees globally. In 2013, he was named one of Time Magazine's 100 Most Influential People in the World. In his latest book, Move Into More, Pastor Chaco encourages others to discover the more which made a difference in his life. Are you ready for the more that God has for you? Well, joining us now is author and senior pastor Choco de Jesus. It's wonderful to have you. Thank here. you. Thank you. I'm honored to be here with you today. So growing up, yeah. you're in a really rough neighborhood. Yeah. And, you know, people are, are thinking about ourselves, about life is so colored by our environment. Yeah. What was life like for you growing up there? You know, Terry, we lived off the government and um, this idea of more didn't really exist. You just survived in the 70s and as a, as a Puerto Rican family in Chicago, in the worst park in the United States. So this idea of more really didn't resonate because I did not know Jesus. So you really just become accustomed to the less that you have and uh, until, until you come to a knowledge of Jesus Christ. And for you, that happened at 14. I yeah. mean, that, that's young. And yeah. what was it that drew you to Jesus at that point? Well, in, in the 1970s, there was a riot between the Puerto Ricans and the police department, and the National Guards have to come in to surround our park. And that summer of 1977, the mayor hired thousands of young people to clean the streets of Chicago. I was one of those young people, but my assignment led me to a, a church, a Pentecostal church in Chicago. And it was there, 1977 of June, where I first time ever entered to an evangelical church. And little did I know that I would accept the Lord of that summer and the Lord would mark me at a youth convention. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then 23 years later, I would become the senior pastor of that same church that today I'm pastoring to the glory of God. How did God mark you? Well, at you know, 14 years old, I get saved. That's August. In November, the youth goes to a youth convention uh -huh. and the preacher made a... Uh, an altar call, and I go to the altar call, and I, I'm kneeling down, a lady comes over me, starts praying for me, and then she begins to prophesy and says these words to me, Terry, I've called you to be a great leader, stay in my path. I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse those who curse you. And I remember getting up from the altar, I'm like, wow, th that was really amazing. Then I go into the elevator of that hotel, and a tall Anglo gentleman comes in in a suit. As the doors close, he turns towards me and says, have you not heard? I wow. called you to be a great leader. <laughs> Stay in my path. I just wanted the doors to open so I can run down the hallway and think, what is going on here? Yeah. Yeah, but, that's where God marked me there. But it resonated in your heart. Yeah. And you began to believe there was more. Absolutely. Absolutely. So how did God, I mean, here you are, you're in this this area of crisis, really, yeah. as far as lifestyle is concerned. You're, you're surrounded by all kinds of illegal activity and stuff. Okay, so you go to this church. Now you're the pastor of this church. Yeah. How in the world did you go from the 14-year-old who was marked by God to the pastor of the yeah. church in the same quality, neighborhood that's challenged? Same neighborhood. I still live in the same neighborhood. In the 70s and the 80s, 90s, you still have that same influx of gangs and so forth. However, the church began to go outside of the four walls. Mm. And we started engaging culture, yeah. engaging the prostitutes, engaging the gangbangers. And that's where crimes started to begin to change in our community. When the church went outside yeah. and said, we're gonna deal with this issue, and which is the body of Christ. This is what we're called to do, is become the salt and light. That's what Matthew chapter five tells us. Do you talk in the book about people of God, biblical people of God, yeah. and how their knowledge and desire for more made a difference. Share some of those. You know, with Noah, when the Lord told Noah to build yeah. the, the ark, you're talking over 100 years. And even before he saw a cloud in the sky, he started building. Diligently. Diligently. So he worked. You got Enoch, who walked with God in the midst of evilness. Yeah. So we can learn from our brothers and sisters in the Bible that in the midst of evil, you still can become godly that God has more for our lives, even though you see less in our culture. Yeah. But if we just walk in obedience, Terry, that's the key, right? So many of us in our culture, we want to understand what God has for us. And I try to teach people that understanding can wait. Yeah. 
but obedience cannot. Yeah. And Noah walked in obedience. Enoch walked in obedience. Esther walked in obedience. Nehemiah walked in obedience of God. And you know, sometimes I think people today, especially because our culture and our society yeah. have changed so much, are intimidated to stand tall in their faith and declare the goodness mm. of God, the truth of God. What do you say to them? Well, the Bible says in Ezekiel chapter 22, verse 30, that God himself is looking for a man yes. who would stand in the gap, in the gap. And then the Bible says that he didn't find anyone. And so I want to make sure that in Chicago, right, that I'm standing in the gap for the disenfranchised, the marginalized, and across this nation, people who are viewing us right now, that God is asking you to stand in the gap for those who have been marginalized, who are voiceless. Yeah. I want to encourage them to stand for their faith. Amen. Listen, in the 50s and the 60s, Christianity set culture. We would set culture, but today we're the minorities. Mm -hmm. we're, we are no longer the culture that's setting. We're the yeah. counterculture. But despite that, one man, one woman with God is the majority. Exactly. And so I want to encourage your viewers to go out there and live out their faith. I want you to talk about the importance and significance of humility in the midst of standing and walking out the call on your life. God is always looking for that man and woman to elevate. Once you start trying to promote yourself, all right, this is not what God wants. God wants us to walk in the spirit of humility. It is God who elevates. And I've experienced in my life, Terry, that with every elevation, there's a new revelation. And I've seen the glory of God as I walked, I, I would stand in my church in the doors, hugging people. I don't want to be the pastor that goes through the back door okay. and not greet members. I'm too busy. I'm too busy. <laughs> I'm too good for this. Listen, I still live in the community yeah. where I grew up in, where there was infesting, infestation of drugs and gangs. But God wants us yeah. to, despite of, of the platform, and I recognize that what I have, God has given it to me. Mm -hmm. And my job is to steward that platform. Right? Because with responsibility, when God gives you a revelation, there's a responsibility that we have, and that's to steward that with humility and grace and always giving God the glory for what he's done. How do we ask for more? What's the, because we're not talking about cars and houses and money. Yeah. We're talking about something bigger than that. Yeah, yeah. You know, our culture has been inundated. Right? First, we wanted more material things, and then we realized that that doesn't satisfy us. Exactly. Then we become a culture that we want less. What people need to understand is that the inner desire, having more or less, only God can satisfy. Yeah. And all you have to do is ask God, I want to live in the more that you have for me. Mm -hmm. If we could just, the Bible says, ask me. The Bible says, seek me. Yeah. Knock at the door and I'll open it. We just need to learn to operate in that spirit mm -hmm. of wanting more of God's will. Yeah. Not what this world offers. Only God can satisfy that inner desire in our hearts. And then to reach out and take it. Well, Amen. I want to tell people that your book is available wherever books are sold. If you want to learn more, Pastor Choco's book is called Move Into More. And it's nationwide yeah. available right now, but a message for all of us as believers. Thank you so much. Thank you, Terry. Great to have you here. Thank you.